My name is Paul Oliver. I'm the owner of Pinellas Power Products. This is the installation instruction for the extended run fuel tank kit for the Power Horse 7500i generator. This uh, kit will allow you to hook this generator to any size fuel tank you need up to several hundred gallons. Uh, first thing in the kit is a little letter telling you that you've bought the greatest thing since sliced bread. bag of small parts includes a flash drive with a copy of this video on it. Okay. In order to install the kit, pretty straightforward. I'd like to point out something here before we go taking the uh, fuel selector knob off. Right now the fuel selector knob turns the fuel on and the electronics on. You'll notice that when you turn it to the on position there's a delay for the panel to light up. The first thing we need to do is separate the fuel selector valve from the electronics because we need it to be able to run off of either the remote tank or the stock tank without shutting the electronics off, so we're going to separate those first. The fuel selector knob comes off with a Phillips head screwdriver. And the panel comes off with six Phillips head screws. Just putting this on to reduce scratches. Okay, if you look back in here, you'll see there are three electrical plugs. You'll go ahead and unplug all three of them. And there's just a tab that you squeeze on it. Can you get enough light in there? Can you mm -hmm. see that? This black one, the tab is right here. You just squeeze on that tab to get it to release. And these three plugs here are connected to the fuel selector valve in the back. This half goes to the wiring harness. So the half that goes through that hole, you can ignore that. The half that goes to the wiring harness, if you get your bag of small parts, first thing in the bag of small parts will be a, a blind plug. And it will go in here. And that's simply to stop anything from getting in here and shorting it out. Then the new main switch comes in the kit. The uh, production version will have a red switch so it stands out more obvious to you. So you'll go to the main harness side, not the side that goes into the, the hole in the back panel. This white plug that goes here, and the black plug connects up here. And now, 
if you notice, when you flip this switch on, there's a slight delay and the panel comes on. Just like with the original one where you turn the knob and there was a slight delay and the panel lit up. So this is your new main electrical switch. Okay. I'm going to mount it so that the switch is just above the start knob or the start button. You'll notice that there's very little room between the start button and the main module that runs the display. So we've got a small hole to drill in here. center that hole. Now I'm going to take a reamer and just clear up the burrs on the front of the panel. Undo the uh, friction washer and both nuts that are on the front of this. I'm just going to put the top screw in loosely for now. You can either put this toggle switch in to where it goes left to right or up and down. I'm going to put it in to where it goes left to right. So the left would be the off position and to the right would be the on position. I'm going to put the friction washer back in place. Because of the thickness of the panel, there's only room for one of the nuts. It'll come with two nuts and a friction washer.
not a whole lot of room to work in here. Now you see the reason why I hung it on with one screw loosely is so I can reach in the back and uh, hold the switch while I tighten the nut down on the front. show you something before we put the rest of the screws in. Let me take this back off. You'll notice that you can't put the switch up higher right through the words uh, the power horse because there is another electronic module right behind that. So if you tried to put the screw up or put the switch up here you'd be drilling a hole into electronic module that's why I pull the panel off and drill it through from the back okay so now we'll take tuck our wiring out of place so we can put this back together So now this just controls fuel. Turn the fuel to the on position, you notice the panel doesn't come on. The panel is controlled by this, and again there's a slight delay just like there was originally when you moved the knob back and forth. So this is your fuel, and this is your ignition component. When we get the whole kit done, the on position will be the stock tank, and the off position will be the remote tank. come around the side here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but here's the back of the fuel selector valve. And here's a small hose bent into an elbow. It's a 3 16 hose and it's held in place with two Corbin clamps. To undo a Corbin clamp, you just squeeze the two tabs, rock it back and forth.
and we're just going to work this hose. Let's make sure that the fuel selector valve is in the off position first. That way it doesn't drip near as much fuel. And you'll get a couple of drops of fuel out of here because there was fuel in the hose. And then we're going to pull it off of the back of the fuel filter. And there's the hose that you just removed. Okay. You come over to the kit. You're going to have a section of 3 16 hose, which is what that is. First thing is to cut a section of 3 16 hose, one and a half inch long. You'll take the uh, 3 16 T fitting and put the uh, one and a half inch, inch section onto this leg of the T. Cut another section one and a half inches long. and put it on to one of the other legs. Now if you remember, this hose came off the fuel filter and was bent at a 90 degree. So what we've got is a little longer here. We cut them at one and a half inch each. We can actually trim them a little shorter now. Uh, if you trim them too short, it's a pain in the neck to get them in place. So I'm going to trim maybe another quarter of an inch off of each one so that they'll end up ultimately one and a quarter inches long each. So it'll have a characteristic pretty much like the original hose did. Take the rest of the 3 16 hose, push it on. to the fuel team. Included in the kit are several small clamps and several large clamps. The small clamps are for the 3 16 hose and that would be this one. The large clamps are for the quarter inch hose and we'll be getting to that in a minute. So you just take the clamps and squeeze on them to tighten them down. And I find that it's a lot easier to assemble this portion out here by a workbench than it is to try and assemble it inside the cabinet. The neat thing about that power horse is you do have plenty of room inside the cabinet compared to some other generators, but it's just easier to assemble it out here. Okay, so that's how your T fitting is going to look. And we're going to slide this onto the fuel filter and this onto the back of the fuel selector valve. It may actually be easier to put a little bit of oil on the hose fittings 
fact, I'll go ahead and do that. The easiest way to do that is to come around to the other side of the generator and just loosen up the dipstick and just put a drop of oil on each one and make your life a lot easier. Don't forget to tighten the dipstick all the way back down. That's just the sort of thing you'll forget. Okay. So this goes onto the fuel filter. This will go onto the selector valve, and then the long end will stay aim straight out at you. Get the flashlight. So I've got this onto the filter. Now we're going to push this on the fuel selector valve. Let me get in here. three sixteenths hose clamps. We'll put one clamping the hose that went on the selector valve. And the other one will go on the hose that went to the fuel filter. You've got extra clamps uh, in case you drop one, like I just did. Shine that flashlight down here for me. Take a break. Okay. I just love it when the phone rings and I'm trying to do a video. Okay, again, we're going to put this hose clamp around a 3 16 hose right up against the, uh, the fuel filter. So now you can see that we've got all the hose clamps in place. You're also going to have a 3 16 to quarter inch adapter. So this is the 3 16 hose. We're going to put a 3 16 to quarter adapter. to join the two together. Okay. What we're going to do is just run the hose out and in a nice loop pointing back up we're going to put the fuel fitting right here. So the next step will be included in the kit. You get a section of quarter inch hose. We're going to cut a section of quarter inch hose about two and a half inches long. And this doesn't have to be super precise. And you'll see why in a minute. 
the quarter inch hose goes onto the quarter inch side of the adapter. Probably should have put some of that motor oil on this. fighting it. Then I'll take one of the quarter inch hose clamps. I guess we'll take the okay. The next step is going to be take the fuel filter included in the kit. Put a little bit of oil on the end of that too, just to make it easier. And put that in the other end of the quarter inch hose. You'll notice that there is an arrow on the fuel filter to point the direction of fuel flow. You want it to be flowing in the correct direction because your inlet fitting is going to be here, it's going to flow through the fuel filter and then on into the engine. We'll take another quarter inch hose clamp, put it here, if you look at the generator, there's a rubber seal, and what we want to do is center the fuel fitting right between this web and this web we'll trim with a razor blade around here so that the fuel fitting will go right here approximately and that way if something falls on the generator or something like that it doesn't damage the fuel fitting or if you walk by it doesn't stick out past the side wheels and so on and allow you to snag your leg a line right about dead center of these two webs. This is just the starter hole. We'll take a step bit and drill it out the rest of the way.
Okay, you can drill it all the way to size with a step drill if you want, but then you risk getting the hole just a little too large, and I want it to be a nice tight fit. Okay, the next step. So take the roll of Teflon tape included in the kit, and wrap the Teflon tape around the threads of the quick disconnect fitting. Be careful when you're wrapping it. Do not over wrap the end like that, because then that'll shear off a piece of Teflon tape. Truth be known, the Teflon tape will get caught in the fuel filter, but I just like to start with a, a nice clean filter. No Teflon or other debris lodged in it. And just give it a few wraps of Teflon tape. What you're going to do is screw the hose barb onto the bottom of this. And now what I'm going to do is take a razor blade and trim the rubber seal. slide it up onto the hose barb that we connected to the bottom of this fitting. We'll take another hose clamp, larger size. Hopefully we can get through with this without any more phone calls. Then look where your fuel filter is and actually that's going to work out perfectly because then there's enough room to pull the hose out to service the fuel filter if you need to. Actually I'm going to trim about a half an inch off of that.
Also included in the kit is another brass fitting, and this will screw into your fuel tank. Uh, the kit comes with two of those fittings. One is for the generator end, one is for the fuel tank end. If you're going to get three or four fuel tanks and rotate them out, then if you get four fuel tanks, you'll need to buy three more of these fittings because it comes with enough fittings for one tank. So on my website, there will be additional fittings if you need them. There's also a uh, hose, and the hose is approximately nine feet long, and it comes with an icon of a fuel tank on one end and an arrow on the other end, and then there's an arrow on the prime bulb pointing in the direction of fuel flow. So the end with the fuel tank logo connects to the fuel tank end, the end with the arrow connects to the generator end, and you'll use the rest of the fuel or the Teflon tape for that. Um, go ahead and put the covers back on it, and then we'll be able to take it outside and run it as a demo. So as you can see, the fuel kit comes with everything you need except for the tank itself. And no two people seem to want the exact same size tank or whatever. So I've got a link on my website for where to order fuel tanks. Or if you want to go down to your local Bass Pro Shop or your marine dealer or whatever and get a, uh, a fuel tank. Uh, that should just about do it. We'll go outside and uh, start it up.